Thank you, everybody, for joining us here in the rotunda of the state capitol. And thank you to uh, all the members of the Republican caucus, uh, Majority Leader Dave Reed, Appropriations Chair Bill Adolph, will uh, also be addressing uh, you today. And thank you so much for, for uh, being here to, uh, to listen to our perspective. Folks, we in the House Republican Caucus have a vision, a positive vision. Private sector job creation, fiscal responsibility, integrity in government. We are about finding solutions and about moving towards family sustaining jobs because if you have good family sustaining jobs across the Commonwealth, you will have good communities and good schools. When I was growing up in Allegheny County, and my mom worked down in Beaver County, back in the late 70s and early 80s, there was a decline in the steel industry. And there was a time when there was 27% unemployment in Beaver County and 19% unemployment in Allegheny County with the collapse of the steel industry. Folks had a really difficult time. People were leaving Pennsylvania to find other jobs. And right now we have an economy that has a growth rate of less than 1%. The general rate of inflation is around a half percent. And yet, unfortunately, the governor didn't offer a vision. He didn't even put forth the details with respect to his budget. There was no vision. Unfortunately, there was just fear-mongering. He wants to take spending from the $30.26 billion budget that both chambers put on his desk to $33.3 billion, an increase of well over 11%. And he wants to continue to advocate for increases in the personal income tax, the sales tax, and many other taxes. Last year, he came before us and asked for an increase in the personal income tax of 20% and 10% in the sales tax and an expansion of the sales tax of $2 billion. And he says that the legislature, who has placed three fiscally responsible budgets on his desk, that we're not doing our job. That first budget that was on time, did not increase sales or personal income taxes, spent about $30.18 billion, increased spending over last year by about 3.3%, while the rate of inflation is less than 1%. And while he was still calling for massive tax increases, we put another responsible budget on his desk in September, a stopgap, and he vetoed that in full too. And right before the holidays, we put forth a compromise budget, $30 billion, $260 million, a 3.6% growth over last year's spend, $400 million more in public education, Primarily, as you know, going to teachers' salaries and benefits. The contribution to the pension systems continues to go higher and higher with each fiscal year. And the governor did, in effect, sign into law most of that, 90% of it, just shy of it. So what we think, and what we think is responsible to do, is let's finish the job for 15 and 16. 
Let's close the 15-16 budget with the last remaining lines that are out there. Corrections, Medicaid capitation, and of course the basic education funding line. As you know, the governor signed into law all the other education lines, social security payments, ready to learn block grant, special education, transportation, the mandated contributions to the pension systems for teachers. We need to close the basic education funding line. He signed into law those monies through the end of the fiscal year, of, or, or the calendar year for 15. We need to close that. Now here's the thing. The governor still wants an additional 600 million more in spending for 1516. I'm sorry, if you are concerned about a gap in revenues and expenditures, spending an additional 600 million in 15, which multiplies again in 1617 from 600 million to 1.2 billion, that is not about closing a gap between revenues and expenditures. And the notion that somehow it's this, it's the legislature, do you know what each and every one of these members do? They talk to people back home. They're listening to their bosses back home. Like me, they're running into people at the grocery store or at church or in parking lots. And these are people who have two jobs, a lot of them. Both mom and dad's working to make ends meet in a stagnant economy, hoping that their job isn't sent away like they did with Shell out west, hoping that they can keep it going with the competitive environment in the global economy. And you know what they're hearing? Oh my goodness, please hold the line on taxes. Please tell us that you are going to be fiscally responsible, and that's going to be your last resort after you make other responsible decisions. That's what everybody's hearing. Because hardworking people want to keep more of their money to spend on their kids' education for college, on the family vacation, a rainy day fund for themselves, maybe a new washer and a dryer. These are good, solid, honest, hardworking people. And with all due respect, I think the governor is out of touch with those folks. I don't think he's out and about like we are. I'll leave it at this. I think it's easy to live off of Mount Wolf or off of Rittenhouse Square and not know what real people are doing in everyday lives. I think it's easy to lecture and scold and to act like you know better and be elitist, but come and see what real people are doing in everyday lives, because these folks do. Thank you very much. Leader Reid. Good afternoon. I, I have to admit, I've never actually seen a budget address that didn't talk about a budget. Um, the one thing that I would take from the governor's presentation today, and having actually read through the budget document, that unless the governor happened to pick up a leprechaun with a pot of gold in his Jeep, there is no chance that budget is based in reality. There is no chance there are the votes there in the House and the Senate to raise the taxes necessary to balance that budget a $3.6 billion tax increase for $3 billion worth of increased spending. $3.6 billion in tax increases, $3 billion in new spending, 15 new taxes, and a retroactive income tax. So not only are we going to attack and tax Pennsylvania workers going forward, we're actually going to say to the workers, Hey, we know you've been working for two or three months already this year. We know taxes have been paid, taken out of your paycheck during those months. We're not only going to tax you going forward, but the governor actually wants to go back retroactively and tax you more on the salary you've already made. 
It's absolutely absurd. And the governor keeps talking about this framework agreement, this framework budget. The part that he forgets to tell the people of Pennsylvania, the only part of the framework that he's still proposing is higher taxes for higher spending. He doesn't talk about property tax reform. He doesn't talk about pension reform. He doesn't talk about liquor privatization. He doesn't talk about greater accountability for education. And he doesn't talk about greater restrictions on property taxes increases in the future. It's about more taxes, more spending. And it's not about a severance tax proposal anymore either. It's about a retroactive 11% increase in the personal income tax. I was hoping today the governor would come before the House, recognize the fact that we've got differences of opinion, that we've got challenges facing this state, that we're going to have to work together to make our way through them. I was hoping he was going to come back from fantasy land. Instead, he left for Neverland. And until he returns to the realities of the challenges facing the people of this state, we're going to continue to confront these challenges head on, because we are not going to rubber stamp $3.6 billion in higher taxes for $3 billion in higher spending and ignore all the other issues that are priorities for the people across this entire commonwealth in the past and in the future. We have a greater responsibility to make great decisions, historic decisions, to enact generational changes. Generational change doesn't come with just higher taxes for higher spending. Hopefully our colleagues in the House, Republican and Democrat, in the Senate, Republican and Democrat, will finally compel the governor to come back to reality, finish the budget, the last 13 percent for this year, and have a reasonable discussion on how we enact the budget for next year. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Adolph. I'm the House Republican Chairman of the Appropriations Committee. I just recently had a knee replacement, pretty, pretty painful, about three and a half weeks ago. But not as painful as this process has been. And that 60-minute lecture that we just had made it pretty painful. Because these ladies and gentlemen that stand behind me and stand up for the people that they represent don't get paid to rubber stamp anything up here. And let me tell you something. And the speaker mentioned that both the House and the Senate put responsible, sustainable budgets on the governor's desk. I don't agree with the governor that there's only two paths that we must take. One path, which is tax and spend, to $33.3 billion or bankruptcy. There's a middle path. And that's the, that's the path that middle-income folks, small businesses, want us to take. That budget that the governor talks about, if he would have signed it, we would have passed a revenue budget the next day. But he chose not to. This governor chose the first governor since I've been here in Harrisburg to veto an entire budget back in June. Never got off his proposal for months. House Bill 1460 that we both houses and Senate voted for was responsible. It needed some revenue. It had revenue growth in there. This PIT of 3.4 and total tax increase of 10% at a time where our senior citizens re received zero increase in their Social Security benefit this year. How do you expect them to pay those type of taxes? To start paying sales tax on cable television? This isn't necessary. I, I hope to have learned something today in that budget address and not be lectured to. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to work together up here, Republicans and Democrats, but come together and put a responsible budget 1516 first, which was House Bill 1640, 
and then take on this structural deficit. But you do not take on a structural deficit and increase spending at the same time. That's a disaster, a taxpayer's disaster. So let's work together. Let's not lecture the legislature. Because let me tell you something, we worked hard putting together a budget. And just because we don't agree with the governor does not mean that we're not working hard and being responsible and representing the taxpayers of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? We actually believe the governor's vision is getting in the way of that obligation. You know, if he would stop proposing record tax hikes, record spending increases, actually sit down and talk to both Republicans and Democrats within the legislature about what's realistic, what's affordable, and what can actually get 15-16's budget done, and we can move on to 16-17, I think a lot of this uh, would be wiped clean. Well, we're going to continue to meet with our colleagues in the House and the Senate, Republican and Democrat, on what the legislature can agree upon. Ideally, you know, the governor would be part of those conversations. After seeing his address today, I'm not really certain he's interested in participating in those conversations. And the budget hearings are going to start within the week, and we'll go through the process of vetting uh, his proposal, since he didn't take that opportunity today, so that the people of Pennsylvania can see what's actually included in it. And we're still going to try to wrap up the last 13 percent of this year's budget in an expedited fashion. Look, the governor could choose whatever tone he wants. Uh, we understand he's gone through an entire year of spending millions of dollars instead on education, but in spend, spending them attacking the legislature through mail pieces, TV ads, radio ads. We're focused on getting a budget done and actually governing. When the governor is willing to focus on that particular agenda item, we'll be sitting here as willing partners. We've already started the process in the Appropriations Committee and on the House floor of moving forward with several supplemental appropriations. I believe the corrections appropriation will go forward out of the House this week. We'll send it over to the Senate. We'll be working on basic education and medical assistance as well as we prioritize uh, those issues going forward. I think the severance tax issue, look, folks can talk about it, House, Senate, Republican, Democrat. The bottom line is it doesn't bring in any money because natural gas prices are at record lows. We went from a situation last year where the governor proposed a billion dollar severance tax to fund education, except he forgot to actually send the money to education, send it to alternative energy programs. By the end of last year, even he admitted his severance tax proposal only brought in $50 million. So if folks want to have the political discussion about a severance tax, I'm sure there are folks willing to engage in that, uh, but it's not going to be the end all be all to balancing a budget this year or next year. Um, well, first off, we think that if you uh, pass the governor's budget as he's proposing with the spending increases for this year and next year, certainly you've got a problem balancing that budget without revenue. We're not proposing to do that. Uh, we think if you're looking to fix a structural deficit, as Chairman Adolph alluded to, the first thing you should do is actually fix the structural deficit. Don't propose billions of dollars in spending on top of that at the same time you're trying to close that gap. And look, certainly we've had discussions on bringing our liquor system into the 21st century, on expanded gaming in Pennsylvania as different opportunities that might be out there as well. And we're always willing to talk to our colleagues and the governor about areas that we can cut back in expenditures to help that bring that budget in line as well. I don't see any way 
the House is going to rubber stamp an increase in the sales tax or the personal income tax to balance this year's budget or next year's budget. You know, we've got a lot of folks who are focused on property tax reform and ideally elimination. That's a separate discussion to be held separately uh, uh, apart from actually balancing the budget. We do not believe we should have a broad-based tax increase to balance this budget. I think the governor is doing everything he can to help justify the biggest tax increase possible so they've got the most money to spend over the next couple of years. And telling people that gloom and doom is coming is certainly a way to do that. But look, we've been struggling to pass a budget over the last number of months. We're eight months into the fiscal year. 87% of that budget is done. But lo and behold, the sky has not fallen. Schools are still operating. Street lights are still on. We still have a transportation network. You know, maybe there's some, uh, some consideration to be given that maybe government doesn't actually have to actually spend as much as the governor's proposing to save the citizens of this state. Thank you, Thank you all very much.